In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I ask, Father, for great utterance and help tonight. I ask God that as I bring your word to your children, it will edify. It will help someone tonight be better and that your name alone will be glorified. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Please let's take our seats. God bless you. Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. May I just ask, does anybody have a new song you just learned recently? If you have a new song you just learned recently, anybody with a new song you just learned? New one, okay. Just tell us the title or give us the melody or something of the song. It's um, Sound of Many Waters. Sound of Many Waters. Okay, which one is this one? The new album, this new song. Okay, new one, Abi. I've not heard it. Yet. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Any other person? Some of us have not learned any new song. Let me just tell you something. If you don't learn a new song, it's proof the spirit of God is not talking to you. Let me. I just said it. Dabe. You might say, Pastor, it's not like that. I'm telling you, if a week goes and there's no new melody in your heart, the Spirit of God has not browsed your heart. You hear, say, what I talk? I'm teaching you these things. So if you come and there's no new song, I'm telling you, you are exhausting your joy. <laughs> Pastor, you could literally only do better. If you don't know new song, there is problem. So every time, are you listening to what I'm yes. saying? Every time you wake up, let it be something that you take seriously. That you say, because you see, Christianity, are you listening? Yes, Christianity without refreshing, you'll be tired. You'll be tired. I promise you, not be me, me. I'm not the one that made this. Not, I'm not sharing opinion. That's one of the things I give thanks to God for as a credit. That I will not come here sharing just that. And there's nothing wrong with my opinion. They're very sound. But I, my opinion, if at all shared, our opinions, or opinion, I'm not sure if there's opinions, okay? Opinion shared, <laughs> very interesting, you know, that, that is sourced from the word of God. So I want you to please take note of it. And that's what the Bible says. In Ephesians 5.18, let's take a look at it. Quickly, I'll just use that, then I'll teach. But I'll, I, I know normally I ask questions, that you have questions. I've asked that question too many times, that I notice you guys are used to it, that you don't have questions. So I believe if you have a question, you ask your question. But I don't think we have any question. The word of God says in Ephesians 5, 18, we're going to 20. It says, and be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess. Do you see that? Don't be drunk with wine, wherein is excess. That is, don't take excess wine. Then it says, but what? But be what? But be what? Help me now, but be what? With what? With what? With the Spirit. How do we know you are filled with the Spirit of God? How? Look at the next verse. Look what it says. It says, speaking to yourselves. In what? Psalms. You should be speaking to yourselves. Psalms. And some, somebody says that speaking to yourselves there refers to speaking to yourselves or speaking to yourself. You know, do you see that? Either way, you are speaking. Uh -huh. Speaking to yourselves, psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. If no melody is running through your heart, the Spirit of God can be questionable present there. Yeah, I'm telling you, oh, because your arms, you have been laden with stress, laden with palaver. Everything that is going on in your mind is deadline. No spirit. Of, you, you will soon be tired. You will soon be, you, you will think we are playing pranks. <laughs> See what he says now? Singing and making melody. Don't forget that you are filled with the Holy Spirit. That you are singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let me corroborate it. Out of the mouth of two or three scriptures, let every truth be established. Colossians 3.16. It says, let the word of God dwell in you richly. Richly. That when you are loaded with the word, because this one says, be filled with the spirit. That means by prayer in tongues. This one now says, if you are loaded with the word, the same thing will happen. The same character will show. It says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. In all application. That's what the word wisdom means. Okay? Teaching and admonishing one another. In what? Psalms. And in what? 
hymns. And in what? Same thing. Make singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Same thing. So what you, when you pray in tongues, if you say you are praying in tongues, you should be responding to a new song. When you say you listen to God's word, you should be responding to a new song. And every day songs are flying. It can be an old melody coming in a new spirit. Or an old song coming in a new melody. Whichever one. But don't let the day go without some melody. Hallelujah. You know, somebody's feeling guilty. <laughs> I saw one, <laughs> one lady like that. I don't know if we know her, Lauren O'Conn. You remember Lauren O'Conn? She, she posted something on her status. She, <laughs> I don't know if I can show you people. She wrote, she wrote, you know this I emoticon, one funny, maybe I'll post it so that we can laugh over it or something. She said, <laughs> she said, point of view. When you are reading the book of Proverbs, <laughs> have you seen that thing? I said, I am like, I am feeling like the fool you are talking about. <laughs> No, I didn't get the joke. Okay. <laughs> that is it. That you are looking really this what this fool is, <laughs> is describing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something, people of God. If your Christianity is lacking joy, you are you are you are you need overhaul. Just go and pack. I'm telling you, yes, sir. there's problem. Yes, sir. You are exhausted. Your engine oil is black. You deserve your engine will soon knock. <laughs> change oil, change oil. <laughs> the the strength of the believer are you listening to what i'm saying yes, <laughs> the strength of the believer is in his joy yes, <laughs> you might think it's because bishop things are working for you if i show you my budget <laughs> if <laughs> if i show you my budget you will know it has nothing to do with things working for him yes, it's not about that if i show you my budget <laughs> But the joy of the Lord is our strength, sir. The joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord. The joy of the... Once you start to feel panicky, tired, you have been using your own strength to run Christianity. Holy mm -hmm. will work now. It can't work like that. What was designed for the Holy Ghost to run? You are using your own mortal ghost. So, uh. <laughs> How you want to do How? The joy, the joy, the joy of the Lord, 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 the joy of the Lord. Glory to God. <laughs> Please take your seats. I have so much to share tonight that I'm hoping that we have enough time. So I don't want to play with this preamble. But I shared something with Arnold as I was coming. And I just felt it might bless us very briefly. So I was saying to him, that there are many things I don't even share as homologies, but because I came late, I don't want to overdo. But let me just say a few now, even if I can't finish it. So let me start with what I planned. I realized that some people eh, are just products of their community. In other words, you are just a product of how you grew up. All right? But how that you grew up eh, is not fitting for the realities of your, now, your, now, your life now. And so somehow I was, I was hearing somebody talk. And I was saying, why did this guy grow up talking like this? Did nobody challenge him that he can talk better? How was he talking? He was slurring. And the thing that I'm saying is, I'm like, God. I don't know if anybody feels what I'm feeling. That I'm saying that I just want to... As, uh, so first of all, my problem is, have you never gotten angry? If you've ever gotten angry, you will know that that is a misrepresentation of anger. No, uh -huh. no I don't like it. What? I, yeah, yeah, yeah. No. There's something dull inside that thing. Did nobody tell you that you can do better? You know? Exactly. Nobody slapped you up. And sometimes the slap is not necessarily physical. Somebody to just tell you, stop talking like that. Look, most of us are products of our environment. But it, glory to God, in Christ, we can reinvent our environment. Yes, if you grow up like that, that looks like a mistake. You can reinvent yourself. Your case is not a write-off. Stop thinking that that's your misfortune. You can be better. You can be better. You can be better. Yes, sir. 
work ethics in God. The problem is some of us just don't rise to the best velocity. That thing in you that should seek to be first, it has died. As a woman, you just believe that they should be coming to you, they should be coming to you, they should be coming to you. And each time they come to you, you keep saying no, no, no. Until you now go to Shiloh to ask for husband. <laughs> and say, oh Lord, oh Lord, thou shall remember me. <laughs> <laughs> See? <laughs> See? Any man you give me, Lord. Your will, your will, oh God. After during Shiloh, they ask you how to say no. That's why you have to pray. So I say, say, say I think some people just like lying to themselves. Something that it is feminine to say no first. Oh my, it's not to. May your destiny not pass you by. Amen. Some people are too proud to come twice. Telling you that. I know you are fine. I know you have a great destiny, but it won't come twice. That's the truth. Can we make a few? We won't ask you fully. Can we make a future together? If we notice her station, the Lord will bless you. We are gone. You know, it's not a fortune when somebody, when love is only on one side. And it's like, it's always sweeter when it's balanced, too. Let me just tell you something. If somebody likes you and you don't love the person back, or if you like someone and the person does not like you back, there's a problem ahead. Though. There's a problem ahead. It doesn't change so much. Mm -hmm. Anybody, I like him, I like him, I like him. And the person is not re reciprocating with the vibe. There's a problem. Though. Before you come for counseling, I've counseled you now. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes, now you don't say that you don't know that there's a problem. If it's not reciprocating your gesture, if the enthusiasm is not rising at the same velocity, there's a problem. Okay, so that is by the way. But I wanted to say something, you know, and I, I just thought I should share it here. I was saying something about um, the background of some people, and then I was going to talk about minimalist response. That was the last word I, I, I was, I, I, every way. So what happens for me, I don't know about you, is that a word drops in my mind, like God just drops a word in my heart for a number of days, sometimes one per day, sometimes it's one per week. So, so that's how it works for me. So I just hear, stop applying minimalist efforts. Ah, what does that mean? And then I start to see the application in everything around me, starting from myself to maybe my uh, mama to the children. So I just start to see it all around. Minimalist efforts. It's like I see someone just open my eyes to see that word operating around me. And I'm like, why? So that's how it works for me. I don't know about you. But that's my work with God. And what that minimalist effort means that don't apply your, your least efforts in anything you are trying to do. It's minimalist. You know, it's, so I was using the illustration. Let me use God's will. Will it stand up? Let's assume God's will says I should help him massage his back. Let's say I'm a massage, ma, masso. Is it masu? Masso, whatever. So they say I'm a massager and I'm just doing like this. You see, you see that effort? Am I not making effort? But that is a minimalist effort. Yes, it's the least effort. There are better ways to massage. He will feel it. You know? You understand? You understand? Uh -huh. If you're going to send a punch the same way, you know? Sit down right there. The guy gave up. <laughs> you know? You know? Of our TV. You, you see, some of us enjoy minimalist efforts. No. You are touching someone, it's like you are not touching anybody. When, hold something, hold something. Let's know you are holding something. Apply yourself to life. Do you understand what I'm going to say? And don't be too delicate that life is not feeling your impact. Make your impact felt. I mean, don't just walk through life and be like a shadow. You can sit down. Some people's shadow, they say it's getting fatter than them. You know? Since the weary is eating more than her. You know? <laughs> I pray that will not be a reality. Luke chapter 8 and verse 18. I will be given, I will swear as not, from me it shall be taken, even though that which is meant to have. Does that sound fair? Take it therefore how you hear. You are how you are listening tonight. For whosoever has to him shall be given. 
so you have more will be given to you he now says and whosoever hath not from him which from him shall be taken even that which he seems to have so he actually had something because if he did not have something they can't take anything from him yes, but he had something that he looks like he is not maximizing he is thinking he does not have he's telling himself what is this among so many he's saying what is five loaves two fishes in the midst of five thousand people you can sit on there huh? he says that one which he has will collect it again that means when you have something and you're not doing something about it and then Arnold said question I said question answer ask question he said are you saying that what I know will be collected from me? I say yes so if you know something and you are not sharing it that's what I'm saying what you know will soon evaporate if you have a voice and you are not talking that's why I told you that there's no way there's no way there is no way that if you are inspired you will not communicate if you are receiving downloads or it's like food if you are taking in taking in and you are not expressing out or showing that you are taking in taking in there is no way that your storage will soon destroy you so you must seek for opportunities to render whatever you know that's one of the problems most of us are having you will learn so much but there's no way to express it there's nobody to tell so even what you know you've forgotten you must seek for your own pulpit to express does have to be this place for example if i'm reading so much and i don't have a pulpit i can write so much if i'm inspired or you get that some friends in secondary school and you have to talk to them you have to listen to me all of you sit down I, or you carry your phone and preach on your phone you see it's not because you want to be a preacher yes, sir. it's because you understand that there is a need for expressing whatever you know hmm. I was telling Bayo the other day I said the auto button on my phone you remember this what, what do you call this thing? action button yes, sir. on my phone I've turned it to recording because like yesterday I was coming back from the hospital I, I, it, was, it was like someone was downloading my head. <laughs> I couldn't hold it. I quickly brought my phone poosh, while driving. I started talking while, you know, you can talk while driving. I started saying everything I wanted to say. I was talking about how some people used to conclude about other people before their time. That's what informed today's, to, uh, last, today's post that I wrote yesterday. That don't conclude on anybody's life. That's what informed it. Yes, I was driving and then I saw a, a picture of a pastor. That people used to abuse as yao yao pastor and i used to tell them stop calling people yao. i don't want to call them they would say hey, hey don't you know reverend alex just tell us you, you can't say you don't know what they are doing i said i don't know what anybody's doing i don't and he, i was looking wrong so yesterday i saw on the poster the guy's poster has changed what he was preaching it had changed from the normal things he used to post all those ritualistic kind of titles you know this type of thing not me by my blood you know all those type of titles so i saw him yesterday and he's a friend as in not a close friend but we meet at different meetings together and i was like you don't conclude on people sir people that you saw yesterday can change tomorrow yes, sir. what are you saying are you god are you god just like some of us your friends are questioning that uh, can, could you have changed you yes you have changed and it's without their consent so what am i trying to do here i'm trying to say that anything you know is what you have you are actually what you know if you know something it's your privilege to share it gather the people that you know can listen to you big or small sometimes you know i mean mama has adjusted now i used to bore her with fresh revelation I said, do you understand? She said, yeah, I get it. I get it. <laughs> At least I've bored you with this one. You must hear this one by force. Soon enough, oh, I get it. Do you see my point? Find someone to hear you. Are you listening to me? Don't be waiting for the day Reverend will call me. I know the day the, the Lord, Reverend is going to call me. Bishop will call me. Bishop. I'm not calling you. I'm not calling you. You understand? Uh -huh. 
is when you are doing well, we call you. What am I trying to say? I'm trying to say that whatever you can do and you are not using it will soon be collected from you. It's not a threat. It's scripture. Even that which he seemed to have. Actually, one translation says, even that which he has will be collected, will be received from him. So what I'm saying tonight is, if you know something, maybe you have been building scriptures, you are developing something, or you are a singer, or you know something, you should express it as an expression of your inspiration. Please, do you guys get what I'm trying to say? Yes, Anybody who knows something must express something. If you've been taking anything secretly inside, it must express itself publicly outside. How do we know a pregnant woman? She has been doing wonders privately. She comes out publicly that something has happened to her. You can't be inspired secretly and not be expressive publicly. You have to be expressive. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, Scripture says that, that what you do secretly will be revealed publicly. If nothing is revealed in your life publicly, then you are not doing anything secretly. So you must be inspired. You must be expressing something. You must be writing something. Something must be showing. Your status has to carry something. It's, look at, do you see how everybody knew by was reading a book last week? Or was it not two weeks ago? Uh, true or false, sir? Uh -huh. Why did we know before? It was not reading. <laughs> but you know, the same way we don't know that Victor is reading one. You understand? Because we've not seen anything on the status. You see what I'm trying to say? You see what I'm saying? The same way we can know that bio is reading something. What, we can't see some people's own carrying anything. You say, no, 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 I don't like writing on status. It's a lie. It's a lie. It's a lie. All those overrated maturity is a lie. It's a lie. You, say, uh, you think because you are quiet that you are mature. It's a lie. Fools grow old. Are you hearing me? Stop, stop confusing us. That because you are silent, you are intelligent. It's a lie. That your lack of expression self can be suicidal. Don't deceive us. You say this one, she's too you, you, she's too Gen Z. Is you that you don't have something to post it because you're not inspired. Anyone that is inspired, it's, the Bible says the Holy Ghost inspired men, they wrote scriptures. Mm. What have you been inspired with? There's no way you'll be inspired in your life, you won't write something, or you won't say something, or you won't do something. If it's your own, is to cook, you will bake something. They didn't send you, you will just look for how to bake something. Do you know that kind of yes, thing? Sir. They didn't send you, you just say kite. I'm inspired. Let me do pancake for who? Nobody. That's how it is. You can't be inspired and stay on a low velocity. Please, do you guys get what I'm saying yes, here? Uh -huh. An artist, nobody sent him more, unprovoked, just carries yes, and start to draw. Yes. Who sent you? Nobody. Check them now. They have a lot of uh, drawings of people at junction there. You say, who's who sent you to draw a Shetima? Nobody. Who sent you to draw? Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, 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 who? Tinubu? You just drew Tinubu, just drew. Because you can't be inspired and be quiet. You can't be. You can't be. And it has very little to do with money. Yes, sir. It has little to do with if you are inspired, the world will know. Yes, sir. Somebody who is a cook, that cooks or likes cooking. Small time. They didn't ask her, she said, I want to try new soup. Who sent you? Nobody. Do you see what I'm saying? You can't be inspired and be quiet. You can't be. It will show. In your lip gloss, it will show. In your eyebrow, it will show. Did you see Lamy this one on Sunday? You know? It will show. 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 Some people, you see how they are dressing, you will know that they are not inspired. They are no longer looking for brother, brother is no longer looking for them. <laughs> You say, nobody's looking at me, nobody's looking at me. No, I'm just going to, I'm, I just want to focus. You know that they are no longer, in, they've collected breakfast, they've eaten lunch, they've had dinner. <laughs> what I'm saying, might not be what I want to teach tonight, but I'm hoping it is blessing your life. You can't be inspired and stay quiet. Anything. Oh, for something will enter your mouth he gave me a song in the night he gave me a song in the night you will sing songs you don't even know the lyrics yes melody in your heart that's what the bible says melody in your heart 
You just say wah wah no, wah 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 na 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 no. You 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 be singing cultural dance if you don't know the. <laughs> hey, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. no na ne ne one day bia bia no. You bo yo. From nowhere, this song will flow in your spirits. Are you listening to what I'm saying here? Mm-hmm. One day I sat down and I just shouted from my seat. Oh, glory of hell. What happened? Nothing happened. I'm inspired. My spirit is alive. Glory to God. Now, what I just did is the equivalent of some people that are talking with a slur. I'm sharpening you up. That's what I'm doing. I'm correcting your behavior. Yes, that behavior that sounds like you are slurring. That when they call you, you just come. You say, ah, no, don't respond like that. There's a better composure. Yes, There's a better version of you. Yes, sir. Are you listening to what I'm saying, yes, sir? sir? Right. Tonight, eh? sweat. Question. You have question. Question. Is it spiritual? Let me bring handkerchief. I think I don't have handkerchief. Okay, I have one here. Yeah. What's your question? Question. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Hallelujah. Last week I. Question. You see what I'm saying? Oh yeah, go ahead, please. Hurry up. So uh, the scripture you told us to read, uh, the book of Ecclesiastes. Uh, I feel that if some of us have read it, we can ask the question. Yes, you do not ask now. So uh, when I got to chapter seven, I was confused, and uh, actually, personally, there are some scriptures that I. I don't, I don't, I don't see them like I should be reading them. Like there are some scriptures that I feel they are older than me. Like and even most of the Lord, which, like maybe Revelation and some scripture like that Ecclesiastes is one of the scriptures that is tricky, even some part of Proverbs. So when uh, that uh, Ecclesiastes was talking about, it is better to go to a house that is mourning than a house that is that is marrying. So in that chapter seven, there, has, there were so many things that 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 is that does not look like how I understand myself or understand the normal things. So my question is, how how to apply some of those some of those uh, learning those instructions, right? Yes, sir. Yes, or sir. Those, those principles. Yes, yeah, those principles. And if there are scriptures that on how to understand what that scripture is saying or if there are scriptures that there are times that should be read or we have to go to a level that I should be reading so I don't know if you get uh, I get I get you yes, trust me I get you you know that that scripture I told us to read 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 how many of us read it? if you read it Ecclesiastes some of us don't even believe it exists if you read Ecclesiastes 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, please raise up your hand. <coughs> you see how, how well we are doing. Was it that you were not listening to me? Please, why didn't you read it, man? Why didn't you complete it? Five chapters. Auntie Peju, why didn't you read it, man? Sit down, Preggy. Why? Five chapters. All of us. Wait, uh, Tolani, why didn't you read it? And you are dancing up and down your status. And so why didn't you read it, man? You are now aware. Why didn't you read it, auntie? Stand up, my friend. You are doing promo. You've not read scriptures. Eh? Why didn't you read it? Disobedience. Just settle your mind. Nothing will happen. See, really looking down. Why didn't you read it already? 
confidently. And you are watching film in my house. Hey, hey, Daniel, why didn't you read it? You read it. No, Daniel read it. Chris, you did not read it. You are not even aware. <laughs> and so why didn't you read it? Eh? Where did you reach? Chapter 16. Just chapter 16. Just one chapter. Why? Okay, why didn't you read it? You listen to it as audio. Yes, sir. That's different from reading it. Yes, that's <laughs> Auntie, what scripture are you showing my son that you've not read? What? Why didn't you read it? You forgot to read it. Auntie Kenny, why didn't you read it? If I don't call you, you know your case is closed too. So you don't think it's a good thing. Why didn't you read it? Auntie, why didn't you read it? Are you aware where to read scriptures? Why didn't you read it? You didn't remember. Throughout. When did you know that I were to read it? How did you know? On prayers, ba? Did you hear it every day? You heard it every other day now. Abi? Amarachi? Why didn't you read it? And Tutorial, why didn't you read it? Ah. Ah. Okay. What should we do now? All of us, we are supposed to go and read that scripture. So you are all going to read it. Are you listening? Yes, sir. Okay, so you, you send me a pass. All of you, let me count. One, you let me, why didn't you read it? Where did you reach? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Chief, did you read your Ecclesiastes? Sixteen. Let's go again. Number one, take one. Six. 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 Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. 13 Amarachi. 14, 15, 16. Okay. At least you guys are the ones present. Are you listening? Yes, sir. Are you listening? Yes, sir. Okay, you are going to read Ecclesiastes from chapter 1 to chapter 12. And you must still read your first Kings from chapter 1 to chapter 22. Are you listening? Yes, sir. Are you listening? Yes, sir. Auntie? Will you read it? Are you sure? Uh -huh. You are going to read it. Everybody, are you listening? Yes, sir. And you are going to take a note to write what questions stood out for you from chapter 6 to chapter 10. You know I selected that chapter. It ends in chapter what? Who can tell me? Chapter what does it end? Good. It ends in 12. It ends in 12. Yes. Abi? Yes. Somebody says 16. It ends at chapter 12. So you're going to write and please report back to me. Um, let me do. Come outside. Can you look at these people? What's your number? Can you look at these people? Yes, sir. Can you write down their names? Yes, sir. And send it to me on WhatsApp. Would you remember? Just check those that are seated. Don't forget Dami is part of them. Just check those that are seated. The only people exempted tonight are the people seated, which are uh, Daniel, Bayo, Dikin, Mama, Arnold, and Aaron, and Victor, yes. So please do that for me. Look at their feet. Don't miss anybody. 16 names. Plus you all know. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Please let's sit down. So you read it and submit it. And listen, you know why you're going to submit it to me? Before Saturday morning. 
That's very kind. Sure, you know. Yes, sir. That's a lot of kind. If you don't do it, I will increase your punishment. So. You know, this is punishment now. Uh -huh. Please read it. Are you listening? Yes, sir. Please read it. It's five chapters. Six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Now, to your question, Victor. Um, the book of Ecclesiastes was written by King Solomon. Come and sit down, please. was written by King Solomon. And King Solomon had stages in his life where he was speaking as a king and then at some other point he was speaking as somebody who was out of touch with god the bible says at one chapter that king solomon loved the lord then at another chapter he said king solomon loved strange women the solomon that wrote ecclesiastes that started it is not the same solomon that ended it so there were intermittent stages where he was seeing rubbish you get a uh hand -huh. that may be only applicable when the clock goes round twice. You know when the clock, they say the clock is correct only twice. The wrong clock is correct only twice in a day. So there are times that what he's saying may sound like okay, but typically at a stage in his life, he was talking like somebody who was high on, you know, the flesh. But the scriptures documented his learning because he was the wisest king. And we don't despise wisdom in this kingdom. Hmm? So some of the things he wrote were to also show that as wise as he was, he became stupid at some point. Do you see my point? Yes. However, he redressed himself and got himself back. Okay? And then he wrote some other scriptures that were fine. For example, it's the same one that wrote Proverbs. The same one that wrote Songs of Solomon. Especially Songs of Solomon speaks about the relationship of Jesus Christ and the church. So there's a lot to still learn from him, even though at some point we'll say he got drunken with his wisdom. Okay? So some of, some of the things you don't understand, don't feel bad. Just gloss over it. But a lot of it are still very useful. Uh, am I right? Yeah, so that's it. But if there's any particular one that strikes you, touch base. Oh, next one. Yeah. I'm a bit confused. Okay. So it's chapter 7 that you mentioned. Are things consistent with you? Like, things consistent with you? Anyway, I, I, I'm not dwelling on only seven. I'm not dwelling on seven. I'm just saying generally. There are some places where you see him say some things that are like, Augustus, oh, what happened to you? But that's why I said, whatever it is, touch base. Mm. So I won't, won't be giving those that did not read it confusion. Mm. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Tolani, don't ever hear me tell us to read scripture again and you know read it you are hearing me uh -huh. it is lack of discretion to do that are you listening to me yes, please try to improve okay especially because i see that you have, you, are, you have a lot of energy to render in activity don't just be cere um, the activity person be cerebral too okay yes, yeah all right chief why didn't you finish reading your own scripture No, finish whatever I tell you to read. Are you listening to me? There are reasons for that. If you listen to Banker's prayers on Sunday morning or this Saturday morning, you will notice the energy she was praying with. When you don't read the scriptures, it shows. It shows when they say lead prayers or tell you to close prayers. It will just show that you are, there is a vacuum. And it's painful for me as a pastor that, you know, but I'm sure you will change from tonight. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I have many kind of disciplines for Christians who don't let me unleash you won't like some some of them will be very humbling for in fact humiliating you would have preferred to have read it than the kind of things i'll ask you to do and you must do it you hear what i'm saying yes, you must do it so don't think that you can dodge all right it's not every day i will ask but please if you, did i ask and you have not done don't tell me i read the last last one no this one we're saying is the one we're saying so what are we reading now please who knows Genesis. 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 What are we reading now, please? Please let's hear ourselves. What are we reading now? Genesis. Chapter 1 to what? Genesis. Please let's read it. Please don't try that again. You're hearing me? 
All right, let's take our seats. Now, tonight I want to... Uh, <laughs> can I do this tonight? I will try. All right, tonight I want to share something that I think will bless our hearts. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And um, I thank God for the opportunity that we have. Okay. You have what? Question. Eh? Okay. Oh, yeah. Let's see. You know, it's not easy for a pastor to be sounding like as if his words have consequences. It's not easy for me to be trying to say, if you don't obey me, this will not work for you. That, that's not something I want to be <laughs> boasting about. But I promise you, you will notice angels withdraw. That's what I was telling you about obedience. Mm. Yes, there is no way, if I am talking to you and I have disobeyed God and I'll come, it will lack authority in my voice. It will lack authority. I get what I'm trying to say. It's just like a spouse, a wife that has not obeyed the husband. It will show. So when a pastor is speaking, I, I think the problem sometimes is that some of us are not used to the consequences. What happens typically when a man of God speaks, whether he's happy or not, what happens is his mood. That's why they call him the angel of the house. It's true. His mood reflects on the people. That's what the Bible says. Keep him happy. Keep him happy. Keep him happy because his joy. You see, nobody takes this honor on himself except he be called. That's the truth. And this calling has opportunities. What that means is things that back us up. Are you listening? Yes, if you go to proper school and you learn or you have been in the field long enough, a bit of what I've done, you will know that there are things that you don't boast about. That you, you don't come and start to say, I'm very powerful. You, you, don't, you don't need to say so. You, you know that kind of, you don't need to say so. But you will just notice that anybody that disobeys is like something withdraws. It's like something withdraws. It's like what I was telling you that time that when Mama and I used to have some issues, those times on campus, you know, when we fight like this, is when somebody, somebody just come and meet her, hey, sister. The day we just, you know, that small fight that when where there was no fight, nobody touched that, nobody called that, nobody did anything. No, they all know, yeah, oh, pastor. As if the demons went to go and announce that yeah. what in jar, what in jar, did they fight? <laughs> just come, just say, sister, eh, wow. ah, ah, sister, be bow. So when I come back, then they see Baba back again. Ah, you just see them with the same person, you know, Caesar, and will not talk to her and pass. What happened? Those things are true. They follow through. It's, it's just not right for the pastor to be boasting that. Do you know who I am? What are you boasting? Oga? Relax. Who made you what? You know? But the truth is that it will affect the lives of your people. That's why the Bible says it's not to your advantage. Hebrews 13, 17. You know? It says it's not to your advantage. When you don't obey or do what you are told to do, they have consequences. But it's just not something to be putting at your face. That if you don't do what I say you should do, that's not healthy. Do you know what I'm that's not healthy. See what it says. Obey. No, give us the other one too now. Obey your spiritual leaders and submit to them, continually recognizing their authority over you. For they are constantly keeping watch over your souls and guarding your spiritual welfare. As men who will have to render an account of their trust, do your part to let them do this with gladness and not with sighing and groaning. For that will not be profitable for you either. That will not be profitable to you either. Okay, it's the same thing he's saying. He says, as he says, obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves for the watch for your souls, as they that must give account, that they may do it with joy and not with grief, for that is unprofitable. You know, sometimes people say it is the Lord I'm serving, it's God I'm serving. You are very right. But you are serving God through a man. Yes, sir. Believe it. Yes, sir. Say it's God, God sees my heart that god will not come and ask you for your heart he's going to ask the person he placed over you for your heart 
He's, he's not going to, God, as he knows himself, he will come and ask you, tell me your heart, Jerry. Don't mind that pastor. It's not true. It's the pastor that say, please, what happened to that? Because <laughs> they must give account over you. We will. That's why God says, don't touch the money, don't touch his girls, and don't touch the, the sacred things of his kingdom. You don't do that. Ministry, unless you are not trained. There are some things you keep sacred. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Yes, yeah. And God knows how to judge them. That's pastors. At every level, he knows how to fix you. So some pastors are taking the liberty to do it. You know that some pastors just say something, and they say it out of anger, and God stands by it. Even though that thing is an abuse. For the sake of the man who God will protect his honor. But God will fight him. Why did you say that thing to your people? Do you see what I'm trying to say? Yes, uh -huh. So, unless you're not trained in the work, I don't know if that answers your question. It was, there are times that pastor, the Moses is not strike the rock. Is that what God told him to do? But the rock brought water out. It was even, God was angry with him. Oh, for that thing, he didn't enter the promised land though. But God answered him first, in front of the people. First. As wrong as that was the reason. Can you imagine if God was that angry? Why did He answer him, Oga? He will honor His son first. When we finish honoring you, then we can come and talk. What, what did you do? That's what happened. God did not say. Most as He was the water finished coming, everybody had drank, relaxed, everybody rested. Uh -huh, this is the water. And I said, Moses, confess. What did you do? Now to this was the Moses that was begging for these people since. So. Say so you are not going to that promised land. That's why James 3 said, look at it. He said, those of you that don't be hasty to be leaders. He said, for those of you that are leaders, we have stronger judgments. From verse 1. There's a stronger judgment on you as a leader. Do you have it? My brethren. Look at it. Eh? Eh? Where is it? Where is it? Not many of you should become teachers, self considered censors and reprovers of others, my brethren. For you know that we, teachers, that is, we as our pastors and all that, we will be judged by a higher standard and with greater severity than other people. Did you see that in your Bible? It says, Thus, we assume the greater accountability and the more condemnation. You see what I'm saying? And not just because I'm pastor, you just talk anyhow. No, it's true. You can talk, but okay, your judgment is more severe. <laughs> so what you can afford to do i can't afford to do it anyhow i was saying some time back i was telling i said if you are going to bring official work to me don't bring it to me like a casual door. i don't do it like that because i am conscious i will give accounts don't ask me this ministry like as if we are eating dinner no they say ah it's not that difficult it's that difficult because this scripture exists do you see what well, let, let's look at verse two and then we move forward it says for in many things we offend. If any man offend not in word, the same man is perfect, and the word is brittle and all right. So, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I said, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, when a person is not responding to a pastor's word, you make his work difficult. Mm -hmm. Difficult not because you stopped him from preaching, but because the character formation in you is slowed down for the glory of God to be revealed. It looks like your liberty. She maybe just said she read it for your advice. It's not like that, especially in these Gen Z people. You, they don't do it like that in this kingdom. You read it because my man of God said I should. Yes, sir. Please, do you understand what I'm trying to say? Yes, Some other men of God are telling their members to do crazy things. Your own is telling you to read Bible, you will still not read. Mm. Then when your pastor does crazy things, like we knew he was doing crazy things. When he was telling you to make his life easy, you were not listening. This is what I'm trying to say. Yes. yes. There are men of God telling their members to do wild things. Mad things. <laughs> God forbid. But it's true. You have the one that is not telling you to do stupid things. And you are struggling with it. Some are telling their members to eat grass. Yes. Sir. yes. And they are eating it with delight. In obedience. And God honors their faith. Maybe we should eat grass more. <laughs> Eh? but you know the funny thing that's how, what human beings like the one that is simple you will not do the one that is hard there is God here what malady I didn't intend to dwell on it but you ask questions so let's just but it's the truth it's frustrates I might not have shown it I, I did not just know the scripture now yes. I've always known the scripture before you ask the question but that's what guides me the typical me I am very strong very strong. if i handle you you will not like the it will, you will almost think i'm recruiting you into warfare but 
is because I'm trying to be as much as civil. I'm learning to be a civilian. The way I was trained, you don't talk twice. You know, it's funny, but most of the great ministries you see today, the men of God there were very brutal. Very brutal. It, it, my two mentors that I follow essentially were very brutal. Pastor Chris, we used to flog his members with belts. That's even the leaders with belts, remove belts, and we flog it, chasing them like Jesus. You know, it's not one part of Jesus you should be. You should be all parts, including the part that flog people. You know, what I'm just trying to say, I, I, I thought you guys would laugh, but you're not laughing now. But what I'm saying in essence is that sometimes you don't know how much difficulty you give a pastor when you don't obey simple instructions to you is at liberty but you are doing disaster when we now overreact you say pastor is too hard now but you are making my work difficult do you see what i'm saying yes, sir. you should repent <laughs> you should repent with 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 sack clothes and um, all that okay let me just show you one more scripture. Jeremiah chapter 46, but 42 verse 6. Jeremiah 42 verse 6. Very important scripture for obedience. Not everything you are told to do is convenient. Alright? Sometimes it is done out of commitment, not convenience. In Jeremiah 42 verse 6. Let's read it together, everybody. Jeremiah 42 verse 6. 1, 2, go. you see that this guy said whether it be good or evil there's a stage you get to so if it is coming from you as god said we will do it that's the way to make the work easy but when i say struggling i did not do it and you as this many did not do it how can the righteousness involved in that instruction be bathed do you see what i'm trying to say it's very important it's very important and you know, if you live with me, you will never know how I commit myself. You just think that because you don't see me shout, you will be deceived. <laughs> you will be deceived. Nobody stands here and does not. There's a level of obedience that keeps you here. Yes, sir. Do you see what I'm trying to say? Yes, sir. There's a level of consecration that makes the work work. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I said, Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Can we go ahead now? No more questions. I finished my time i'll just quickly share what i want to share briefly and then we close all right so tonight i want us to take a continuity from what i spoke to on sunday and i was talking on sunday about what i titled the winning strategy yes, and i said do you have a strategy and so tonight i want us to title what i want to share very briefly developing a winning strategy developing a winning strategy developing a winning strategy developing a winning strategy let us pray father breathe upon your thoughts in my heart and let your name be glorified Amen. in jesus name we pray Amen. now you know there's a video i don't know if we can play it but can we achieve a video eh? should i forward it to you i'll share the link i'll share the link with you and then you just send me plates so that it will help me trigger the discussion tonight. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Dam Dam, okay. Dam Dam's phone. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, I got a video that I felt we could spice up tonight a bit. It's a 10 minutes video that we might enjoy watching. Damn, damn. It's been long you've chatted me, so. Yeah. So, what I want to try to achieve at the end of this whole series. Are you listening? Yes, sir. At the end of this series, if you notice, last week, I was talking about taking responsibility. Taking responsibility. Taking responsibility. And what I want us to know is that God is a god both of miracles and principles say that after me say god is a god of miracles god is a god of principles what that means is that god will do miracles in our lives god will do what no man can do in your life 
God will turn your story around. Amen. Why are you not believing what I'm saying? I said God will turn your story around. Amen. God will turn our story around. Amen. The Bible says when the Lord turned around the captivity of Zion, we're like them that dreamed. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongues filled with singing. And then we said that the Lord has done great things for us. And we said, yes, whereof we are glad. So God is in the business of changing stories. God is in the business of what? Changing, changing stories. stories. However, when God intervenes by changing a person's story, God does not keep the story changed by keeping involved or staying involved in that changed story. God intervenes, sets the journey in motion, and then he withdraws. God does not stay providing miracles as the natural way of living. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Yes, so how does God want us to live our lives? He wants us to live it by what? Principles. I would say principles. principles. So the God is a God of miracles. He will do strange miracles. You are in need of money. He will supply money. But God will not go to the toilet for you, sir. God will not put that CV out for you. God is not going to speak in the public for you. God will not do for you what you must do for yourself. There is a limit to God's intervention. If God does that for you, he becomes partial. Long before you existed, your parents even existed. He didn't do that for them. There are things God did not do for Jesus. If he does it for you, he's wrong. He did not die for Jesus. Jesus took responsibility for his purpose. Are you guys getting what I'm saying here? By, by, is it coming up? Eh? So, so what I want us to see, please listen up, please listen up. You see, I don't know whether I just came here tonight for just marking attendance. I don't want you to do that, please. Listen well. You came for a Bible study session. It's very possible that you can come and not be blessed. It's also very possible that you come and you are blessed. Hold on by your pause it. Pause it, please. Okay. So I, I want to share tonight that it's important that you listen. And what I wrote here tonight is that at some point in your life, you know, I stopped on the subject of faith. I stopped. Look up. Look at me now. Look at me. Eh? I, and still, are you listening? Look at me, everybody, please. One minute. You know, on Sunday, I stopped on the subject of faith. And I said, our winning strategy is faith. Said, That's what I started with. You know, and I was trying to say that at some point, you need to get to a point where you agree that God is the owner of your life. Yes, sir. Do you remember I said something about yes, sir. the God-made life yes, sir. will always be better than itself? Do we all agree with that statement? Yes, what, what I realize is that some of us don't really agree with that statement. If you really believe that statement, you'll be interested in the God way of making a life. That God's way of making your life is not talking about irresponsibility. It's not talking about miracle. No. It's saying finding the path that God has ordained for you. So when we say a God-made life, we are not talking about a miraculous life. Yes, it is a miraculous life, but it's a miracle that, had, that required your own responsibility. Please, do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Now, there are three categories I, I labeled. For the purpose, I wish I had a, like a chalkboard or something. I wrote natural life. Natural life, okay? Please note it down note it down write it down write it down always try to write please the teaching ministry is what will help the believer become optimized don't let me just be preaching at you preaching is not enough teaching is what makes people better when you are not taught you will not know how to execute don't just be interested in me saying god will do it there's no strategy in that please take notes so there's such a thing called the natural life there's such a thing called the supernatural life. And there's such a thing called the spectacular life. The natural life is the normal human being who does not have any kind of extra support other than his natural intelligence. The supernatural life is the one that has something super on his natural nature, on his natural you know, being. Are you seeing then the spectacular life is the one that has God. He's literally no longer the natural person. He's now a spectacular. That is a spectacle. He's a, he's a specimen. 
is a species of a different order of spiritual intervention. You know, there are abamis. So, you know, people that are, are not just living. So, for example, the supernatural life requires sometimes that you act in faith. That life of faith is no longer leaving you as a natural person. The moment you introduce faith into your life, you have moved from the natural step into supernatural, knowing that there is a force that can help your life. You know, I really wish that, I really wish, I truly wish that you don't joke with what I just said. I, I don't know whether you want fire to come out of my mouth before you think about it. If you don't get it, go and listen and chew on it again. What I just said is life. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I don't know what to say to make you know that what I just said now is life-giving. As I'm saying it, I'm feeling the life. If you're not getting it, there's dross in your mind. I promise you, what I just said now is life. So that life of faith invokes you or upgrades your life from the night. You know, that you are listening to me doesn't mean you'll be better is what you do with what you are listening to. Yes, I pray that what I'm saying will not be in vain. You know? So, that act of I believe you, Lord, that act of I trust you, God, makes you move from the natural life to the supernatural life. It's as simple as that. And what I'm trying to do with that is that that natural life is trying his own intelligence. Oh, my God, I go hustle, I go hustle. But the life of faith says there is a god that guides me yes, now that act of invoking god and like we're saying on sunday i think sunday to also prayed about it today that some people take what they have and present it to god to bless mm -hmm. i'm saying why not take from god what he has it comes blessed yes, sir. do you see what i'm trying to say yes, instead of asking and saying lord romoke or funke let God give you the name and give you the person. You will find out that everything is settled. What I simply mean by that is that God will not talk unless you ask for his opinion. Mm -hmm. God will not just come suddenly and say, take a wife. No. It is your inquiry that makes him give you an answer. Yes, Don't say that God doesn't give wife. Yes, he doesn't give wife like take, force a wife on you. But God has an opinion in anybody you want to marry. Yes, God has an opinion in any food you want to eat. God has an opinion about the church you want to go to. God has an opinion about the dress you want to wear. So don't just think that it's about one deep thing. It's only ministry that you now say, Lord, what's your will? No. In every part of the matter. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So the man that involves God into his life, that's what we call the God-made life. Paul, for example, was living a natural life to the best of his intelligence. God now got involved in his life and said, why are you kicking against the bricks? Why persecute thou me? Jesus asked him. I said, what was, what, how did I persecute you? And he said, don't you know that you are affecting me? Logically, he was seeking to fulfill God's will. Mm. Intelligently. The way God has set the order of things before. God said, that's not how to fulfill my will. And God showed him a new way to fulfill his will. Yeah. Look, listen to me. You may be trying to do something honest. Does not mean it is God. Yes, that it is honest does not mean it is God. Mm. Look at what it says. Go, go, give me scriptures first. Because I, I'm not, I need to teach a little before this video comes up. You know, in the book of Romans chapter 10, verse 1 to 4. Please, are you listening to what I'm saying? Yes, so there's a natural life. But you are no longer that natural life. The natural life, spiritual things don't make sense to him. When you say, sow seed, you say, what's seed? These people have brainwashed you again. Okay, we are not arguing with it because naturally, it makes sense that that is brainwash. Let's read two scriptures then we enter the, the conversation. He said, brethren, my heart's desire. Wait, before you read it, please pause this. Eh? Quickly flip to 1 Corinthians 2. Please, let's just do it in order so that it can be sweet. 1 Corinthians 2, let's read from verse 9. Let's start from verse 6 to verse 14. Uh, to verse 16, actually. 10 verses. Are we there? Yes, Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It says, yet when we are among the full grown, spiritually mature Christians, we are ripe in under who are ripe in understanding, we do impart a higher wisdom. The knowledge of the divine plan previously hidden. That is, there's a divine plan. It was hidden. But it is indeed not a wisdom of this present age or of this world, nor of the leaders and rulers of this age. That's natural people who are being brought to nothing and are doomed to pass away verse 7 
Let's read on, please. Verse 7, Bible. It says, but rather we are setting forth what we are setting forth. Please, are you listening? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I rebuke that spirit of destruction in Jesus' name. Amen. Please pay attention. Yes, Listen. He said, but rather what we are setting forth is a wisdom of God, once hidden from human understanding, and now revealed to us by God. That wisdom, which God devised and decreed before the ages for our glorification, to lift us into the glory of his presence. Hallelujah. Verse next, verse 8. He says, none of the rulers of this age or world perceived and recognized and understood this. For if they had, they would never have crucified the Lord of glory. So their way of thinking was different. They believed that if Jesus can die, then they have won. But the same thing that they wanted to use or they were trying to devise was God's method of... It's like God preempted them. It's like God said, this, this, I'm Christ. Uh, you know those demons will come say are you the christ do you want to destroy us before our time and jesus will tell the guy keep quiet man don't tell anybody you are healed he knew what he was doing because he knows the more he says keep quiet they will go and tell again mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> you don't count you think you're clever mm. you're not telling don't tell anybody keep, keep quiet you say, have you come to destroy us before our time he say keep quiet don't tell anybody you know and the more he said keep quiet the more they were telling mm -hmm. read it in john 9. he told that guy that was healed from, uh, blind from his mother's womb. Don't go and tell anybody. Don't go and tell anybody. As he, down, as he was leaving, he, 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 he went to go and tell the world. They said, come here. Who healed you? He said, one Jesus. They said, which Jesus healed you? Which Jesus? And he can, there's nobody that can heal. He said, me, I don't know. Once I was blind, now I see. That's all I know. They said, whether it's Jesus or anybody. That guy told me, you know, because they were arguing that he can't heal you. He can't heal you. Read the story up in John 9. Why am I saying this to us? That you see, the natural people think that they are clever. And God matches their cleverness. That what was supposed to bring destruction to you becomes God's wisdom to elevate you. They are ganging up against you becomes the same reason why God is lifting you up. That is what I'm trying to say. That is, it, it defeats the wisdom of the nature of natural men. So please follow this. It says they will not have crucified the love of glory. Verse 9. We are going now to verse 4, 16, please. But I said, okay, but on the contrary, as the scripture says, what eyes had not, has not seen, and he has not heard, and has not entered into the heart of man, all that God has prepared, made, and keeps ready for those who love him, who hold him in affectionate reverence, promptly obeying him, and gratefully recognizing the benefits he has bestowed. Are you seeing that? He says, eyes have not seen. May your own eyes see them in Jesus' name. He now says, yet to us, God has unveiled and revealed them, and by and by and reveal them by and through his spirit for the holy spirit searches diligently exploring and examining everything even sounding the provide profound and bottomless things of god the divine counsels and he things hidden and beyond man's scrutiny all right so we're getting into the discussion now let's go on bio verse 11. so this is what it says for what man knoweth the things of a man or what for what man what person person perceives knows and understands what passes through a man's thoughts except the man's own spirit within him just so no one discerns comes to know and comprehend the thoughts of god except the spirit of god so he said nobody knows what is your mind except the spirit of uh, except your spirit and nobody knows what is in the spirit of god except uh, nobody knows what is in god's mind except the spirit of god so let's read on so verse next now we have not received the spirit that belongs to the world but the holy spirit who is from god giving to us that we might realize and comprehend and appreciate the gifts of divine favor and blessings so freely and lavishly amarach are you listening you are distracted your fingers eh freely and lavishly bestowed on us by god are you listening please yes, sir. Uh -huh. you too you, i see you are doing the same thing you guys like nails but stop picking your nails job so let's go on are we together yes, sir. Uh, so he now says in verse next 13 and we are setting this truth forth in words not taught by human wisdom but taught by the holy spirit combined and interpreting spiritual truths with spiritual language to those who possess the holy spirit stop so the natural man does not possess the holy spirit when we are talking about things of this life the natural man wants to hear business strategy all of these things you see what i'm trying to say and I, that you you can tell already i'm about to show you something on strategy all right so i came with that and i'm saying that what makes the natural man different is that he has a super touch the touch of the spirit 
on what he's doing. Please follow me quickly. Let's go on bio. Is this is now this is where I'm going to. He now says, but the natural man received not the things of the spirit of God. So what I said to you was there's a natural man, there's a supernatural man, and there is a spectacular man. Please say that after me. Say what? Natural, natural man, man, supernatural man, man, and a spectacular man. Can we try one more time, please? Natural, natural man, spectacular man. man. How do we differentiate the natural man from the supernatural man? It is the super that comes on his natural. So he's a natural person. He needs to do natural things. But there's a super that comes on his natural. That makes him super natural. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, Please, what is that super that comes on his natural? Eh? Uh, it's not really faith. It's the Holy Ghost. It's the Holy Spirit. Yes. That now inspires faith into his life. Do you see what I'm saying? Yes, so the natural man now starts to say, uh, what are you doing? You are going to work. Me too, I'm going to work. You are proposing. Me too, I'm proposing. Mm. This natural, this supernatural man too can even be saying, true, true, what am I doing? It should be it's me that went to work. It should be I'm the one that tried. It should be I proposed. I have so market. Oh, mom, I did try, Joe. And he fails to realize that it is the super making his natural make sense. Mm. Please, do you understand? Yes, sir. That was what I was reading to you in Deuteronomy 8. Yes. That was saying, because you have not built godly houses, you have done it. You can almost forget. This is God talking, oh, that don't forget me, oh. Yes. I'm the one that made you yes. have power to get wealth, oh. Yes, That's what I was trying to explain on Sunday. Are you seeing what I'm saying? Yes, so what happens is that the supernatural man too can be doing natural things and think he's also a natural man. And be getting the results and be saying, oh, well, maybe Nami they try you. All these things where they talk. Yeah. So he now says, look at what he now says. But the natural non-spiritual man does not... Uh, let's finish it first. He said, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. For they are foolishness unto him. That's the natural man. What are you people saying? Oh, they, nobody, you go walk. I go that thing, Joe. If you tell your exam, you think say you will pass. You think we'll admit to you here if you do not do your... Uh, but we did not say we are not natural. We are just super natural. Yes, Please, do you understand what I'm trying to say? Yes, Yes, but not say we are not natural people. Yes, sir. There's a super on my natural. Yes, sir. There's a super on my natural. What you did and I will do, I will get better than you got. Yes, but yes. all of us did it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So supernatural does not mean you are no longer going to work. It means you are going to work, but there's something on your work that makes you better than your contemporaries. Can I hear your amen? amen. 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 The same school you went to, they went to. The same learning you went to, they went to. But there's something about you that makes you preferred. There's a glowing light that makes you chosen. They are selling markets. You are selling markets. They are even any more than you, but you are living better than them. Yes. That's the super. That's the super. Please, are you listening to what I'm yes, saying? Sir. So, we have this natural life, supernatural life, and spectacular life. I'm coming to that spectacular. Let's leave that one first. That's on that level, so that we don't get confused. So, this supernatural life, now, I want us to contrast the natural person and the supernatural. Is that okay? So he now says, for their foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. So the supernatural you are doing, they will say, what is this one you are praying? No more, leave that in, no be by prayer. I agree it's not by prayer. Even I will tell you that it's not just by prayer. But there's something your prayer makes come upon that effort. There's something your fasting does upon the natural. There's something that your giving does on the natural. When others are about to take a wrong bus, something will bring you out of your own bus. When you're able to say the wrong thing, something you say, just keep quiet. Remember Bishop's words. Mm. There's wisdom in silence. Mm. That touch, that finger guiding you is not natural. Yes, see what it says. But the natural, non-spiritual man. Who is the natural man? He's not spiritual. So a person can be born again, but he's not consciously ah. living spiritual. Not spiritual. He, he just believes everything is as what he sees. What you see is what you see. Eddie Bazouz. You know? They are just walking around. So I'm going to leave that to you. Just interacting with the plain world. Whereas the people controlling things are seeing as they know what they are doing. Yes, you know, if you watch those films, Matrix them and all this, you see them still driving a normal car. I'm like, can't you see what's going on? They are not seeing, you know. As far as they are concerned, everything is still going well. But I see accidents. All they saw was accidents. What caused the accident is something beyond yes, you. Yes. But in natural, so non-spiritual man does not accept or welcome or admit into his heart the gifts and teachings and revelations of the spirit of god i don't want to hear for they are folly meaningless and nonsense 
are you seeing it to him and he is incapable of knowing them of progressively recognized so they are progressively recognized oh, understanding and becoming better acquainted with them because they are spiritually discerned and estimated and appreciated so you are in a business you have colleagues everybody's maybe you are making maybe all of you are in open shop cooking food or plating hair as you are all plating hair people are coming to your own shop they you do not have um um maybe your, plenty of customers are coming to you plenty of customers are coming to you you know and they now start to say why is it only you is it only you that they are coming to why is it so they now change your position they put you behind she you understand so they so that people will not see you again to hide your glory they say no problem because of that super on your wall they will still find a way and say we are looking for that sister okay maybe you reduce the traffic of how much comes to you so fine maybe from 10 you've now reduced to five or three people or four people but the money those four people will give you is more than the 10 you were collecting for. Balance. Balance. why that super must not be lacking your natural that's what i'm trying to teach you thank you sir so it doesn't matter whether you're a house girl a george joseph the dreamer a big man a small man once you have super on your natural you will never get the same results the same cream you bought i bought the same cream when i use it the difference is yes. different on my skin yes the same shoe you bought you yes. bought your own two hundred thousand. i bought my own maybe 150 or 100 they are they are saying where do you buy your shoe yes sir why why the same hair cream a uh, uh, roll-on spray you use they say where, yes, sir. Where, where, where do you get why how come you are it is the super on your natural god doesn't want us to be floating and floating i am spirit that's not what he wants he wants us to still be able to interact but on that our natural life he wants us to live super natural please do you understand what i'm trying to say yes, here sir. so quickly let me just finish that so, so, can we just finish this over and then we go on yes, quickly let's wrap it up verse 15 16. hurry up hurry up please because we're still going to romans 10 yes, they will now watch our video then we'll wrap up okay yes, so it now says are you listening to what i'm yes, actually you just do here like here like uh, bob Marley. what was this thing? you go and listen again you must go and listen again i will ask you eh? i listen to what i'm saying he says, but the spiritual man tries all these things, all things he examines. He says, but the spiritual man tries all things. He examines, investigates, inquires into, questions and discerns all things. Yet is himself to be put on trial and judged by no one. Nobody can catch you. They want to hold you like wind. Nobody can hold you down like this. They say this man, you are cunning. It's not yes, cunningness, sir. it's wisdom. Yes, sir. They won't catch on it. Come, we'll trap him. He's coming, he's going to come late. They, they can't beat you, they can't deal with you. I'm telling you, that was what I was trying to tell you to become yes, there. Yes, sir. That, yes, sir. That they would just like, which kind of person is this? The more we are trying to beat him, the more he's rising. The more we want to cover his glory, the more he's shining. That's what the supernatural does. We are not saying you will not go to work. It applies to every job. It, whether you are a janitor, a, an in supervisor, it doesn't matter. Once the super is on your natural, you cannot remain small. Yes, sir. You cannot remain small. Yes, sir. Now, some people forget because when you are working, you almost forget that it is the grace of God working for you. When you are doing the work, you almost forget that he says, yes, not I, but the grace of God that worketh yes, in me. Sir so it's easy to forget and that's why we need to keep reminding you the act of generosity to god's house reminds you god is your source yes, and not your hard work yes, sir. yes now yes, sir. yes that's part of the beauty of titan because when you now make everything you'll be like what is the god's own there what is church zone inside i beg leave that in jaw mm -hmm. <laughs> one of my sons was talking with me on on is in uk the uk church there so he was saying pastor i don't believe in tight i said i'm not going to argue with you but the amount they've collected from you from wrong parking is more than the tight you've paid you <laughs> Sure, you don't believe in tithes, Shay. The guy now come down and say, Pastor, why are you yabby? I say, I'm going to yabby. Let's start with that. Because the natural man experiences suffer head, uses head to jam everywhere. Now, this guy is born again, spirit filled, but it's not putting spiritual things into his discussion. Spiritual thing. He just believes that he just, uh, just should be I'm working hard. 
So he spends all his money working hard. He spends all his money on transport. Before he comes back, his wife is not feeling fine. He has to spend some money to take care of her. Has to spend. So I was yapping him. When I finished with him, he said, Pastor, I agree with you. I said, it's because you didn't listen to me before now. Your life would have been better. I'm telling you, and I'm saying to you too, now that you are hearing, you are better adjust. Yes, I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you the truth. Listen yes, to me. There is such a thing called superior thinking. Aya. Elevated kind of yes, thoughts. Sir. You can be thinking you are human. That's not what makes you human. Mm. Because you have human parts. You are not human enough. It is the quality of thinking that makes you superior. It's the quality of thinking. That you are human doesn't mean you are useful. That you are human doesn't mean that people love you. That's why they can cut some people's parts. Anyhow. There are some of us, they can't touch our parts. Yes, sir. They can. Hey. You touch, you touch, you die. What are you saying? But you, you are afraid. Hey, they will not use me for ritual. Amen. Even the way you are shouting amen shows that you are the next person on the list. I know, sir. Oh. So, you don't, you don't, you don't walk around like a man. You are a supernatural. Yes, you are not just there. There are angels all around you. Yes, you are not a victim here. Yes, you, are not a, you are not allowed to be. Yes, and I should not be stressing telling you by this time of listening to me. We are not victims in this world. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And we are not doing bold face. Yes. We are not doing a boju. Yes, no. We know something working with us. Yes, if you know it, it will affect how you talk to mm -hmm. It's not a good job, it's elevated thinking. Yes, sir. Elevated thinking. Mm. When the scriptures has influence on your how you think, mm. you will no longer be talking rubbish in your mouth. Yes, mm. Your conversations will no longer be promise, promissory notes from God. Mm. You will know you have entered into something. Yes, sir. You have entered a realm. Yes, sir. Oh, this is not anything. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I said glory to the King of Kings. Hallelujah. So I want to draw your attention to this part. So he now says, he investigates and questions and he says, judged by no one, he can read and meaning of everything, but no one can properly discern or appraise or get an insight into him. They can't see you. Yes. They go watch face. What they are seeing. We don't know, but this guy. <laughs> so talking about spectacular, there's this spectacular, that's the spiritual realm. That one is spirits. That one is for spirits. We are not talking about spirits here. We are talking about people that live natural life with spiritual consciousness. That's supernatural life. Are you listening to what I'm yeah. saying? There's a realm where they are spirit. Now spirits, they are, they are pure. What they feed on is spirits. They don't even care about commas. They just feed on spiritual realities. I'm telling you, they don't care about commas. They don't care about what is going on. Those ones are spectre. I don't want to, that's why I said, I don't want us to distract ourselves on them, but they exist. And I'm listening for you. Because, for example, some people literally live by the faith of the Son of God. They don't even bother about what the economy is saying. And, sir, ma, you can live above the economy, sir. <laughs> let's finish the scripture 16. Bio, let's run. Let's run. Let's run. I'm late. All of now, we ask question. And now, do I move? No, be new. All right, let's go. Verse 16. See what it says. For who has known or understood the mind and counsel and purpose of the Lord so as to guide and instruct him and give him knowledge? That means for you to be able to instruct the Lord, guide and instruct him, you have known his mind and his purposes. When a man knows the mind and the purpose of God, you can instruct God. You can guide him. That's what he's saying. Don't say that it can be. It is what he's saying. It's as you read it. <laughs> That he says that it will be done on earth. That somebody can say, Lord, I don't want rain now. And God will stop the rain for now. Like he can, who is it? He said, but we have the mind of Christ. He was asking who has the mind enough to instruct God. Nobody can. He now says you have the mind. Why? So that you can instruct him on telling what to do. In essence, the mind of Christ, the measure, and to hold the thoughts and feelings and purposes of God's heart. That is his heart here. Yeah. Read the scripture. It says that when you have the mind of Christ, you can tell God when he should allow rain, when he should do things, when he should turn things around. Please, do you understand? Yes, sir. Sit down, sit down, sit down. I think a lot of us have not just agreed that you are a Christian. And you want to do it the Christian way. Mm. The day you agree that Lord, I want to do it this way, this man of God is saying, you will notice a joy you cannot replace. Thank you, sir. True to God. Because this thing I'm saying, I've been saying it too. It's not today I started saying this thing I'm teaching. 
but you have just not yet agreed. You believe there's a lot of reward in hard work. <laughs> and there is. But when you work hard without that super touch, your work, you will toil and wonder where your work is. May life not be hard for you. Amen. So look at Romans 10. From verse 1 to 4. Hurry up, please, by Oh, you're there. That's good. See what, I, what it says. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for virtues. Amen. Amen. Israel is Israel. Amen. Mm. This is virtues. Is that they might be saved. Any suro. Are we not saved? Let's look, let's look at what he's saying. Next verse. Go back. Go back. Bible. Let's read the Amplified Classic. Brethren, with all my heart's desire and goodwill for virtues, I long and pray that they may be saved. Let's go on. Verse next. I bear them witness that they have a certain zeal and enthusiasm for God. Amen. But it is not enlightened and according to correct and vital knowledge. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, uh, we notice you have zeal. Let us pray. Oluwa, Oluwa, Badura, Badura, She, She, Baba, do it, Lord, now. Iga, 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 Ura, Uja, Iga, Iga. They have zeal, but not according to knowledge. He said, I notice they have enthusiasm, honesty. Ah, oh, what? Badura, let us. Yes, they are honest. They stay on the mountain, they stay. Let me tell you something. This is God's word. It says they have zeal. It is not according to knowledge. And it was praying that they may be saved. So they are, they are not yet saved. But in their mind, they are enthusiastic. If you serve God and it's not according to knowledge, it's a waste. I'm not the one that said it all. It's scripture. That's why when we are teaching and you are like, Pastor, let's just pray and prophesy. I would let your feelings feel good, but I have deceived you. I have deceived you, especially if I know and I don't teach it. So when we teach it, most times for people it's boring. Pastor, this thing I'm saying, I beg, put fire for our body. <laughs> That's why some people are living in Nigeria like they are living abroad. Do you know how many people ask me, do you live in this country? Why is your skin looking like this? I went to do recording the other day. The pastor was saying, and uh, he said, the media guys, the DSTV guys, they say you don't need uh, makeup. So there's nothing to touch on your skin. In this same country, you are living like this. Yes, we are living like this. I don't even use concon. <laughs> Mama knows. I don't use sponge. You. And he said, why? How? I don't use sponge. I don't use cream. Maybe you think my, my cream is very solid. No. <laughs> no. I won't lie to you. I glow. Yeah. Even me, I fear sometimes when I see myself. Yes, sir. Why are you doing like this? My perfume will help somebody enhance education. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Why am I saying this? I'm not boasting about those things. It's not. I'm just trying to tell you that you can live a life that is God helped. Please, are you listening to what I'm saying? You might think I'm boasting about it. It's not. A, I know. I've got you to the airport. They say, sir, please, you can't stay in economy. Please come upstairs. Come upstairs, sir. You can't stay. I've got you to the airport. They say, sir, you are, are you economy or business class? I say, I say I'm economy. They say, sir, we won't let you stay here. There is no way. This supernatural life, even side toilet above 1,000 level, be how many? God will still send help to you. Yes, sir. We are not locking it. Mm. We are practicing it. Yes, sir. It's not lock. Yes, it's such that when you check that it's not working, you can say, why is it not working? Yes. It's not the one that we are locking. Maybe lock. You see, it's pastor. It's not that it's pastor. Hmm. And it doesn't answer me because I'm pastor. It's because there's a principle. You can be thinking everybody likes you because you are uh, uh, maybe you are a leader in church. It doesn't follow that. Yeah. I have my pastor friends who keep asking questions. And I'm like, don't you read your own Bible? Do you really read it? Oh, you're just reading because things are convenient. You know some of us, eh, they've not put a gun in your head. Unprovoked, you're not stable as a Christian. Without provocation. If just that something is a little hard, you're like, oh God, where's my help? My help is supposed to come from the air. Oh God, where's my help? Unprovoked, though, you're already shaking. When they now provoke you with gun, 
They say, do you know Jesus? You say, Jesus. What? Which Jesus? Jesus. Me? What? Never that. You know? You know that crazy guy? Never that. <laughs> With his hair. You know that crazy? Unprovoked, you are still shaky. Hardship has not come. You are not stable. You are not stable. You think we are playing pranks? You think because your mother served God, you are serving God? Ah! Nonsense. If you like, don't describe my name for yourself. I'm sent to you. If you like, don't listen. Whether you are waiting for God to appear in white, I'm coming in white. See? <laughs> <laughs> you are not serious wake up wake up the funny thing is it doesn't have to be such that the old world knows if your life is shining you will be a specimen here yes, sir. I'm telling you, yes, sir. Thank you sir. a lot of you are making bio with all good respect look like he's a champion what? you can do better yes, sir. you can do better Far better, and I'm saying it's in his sight and in everybody, not to offend him, he's doing pretty well, thank God. But you can be a shiny light. All of us are not serious. You are not serious, you're just pretending. I'm telling you, and thus hear the Lord. You light yourself, you play like as if you are serious, just wishing things will come out. It will not work out. It's not a curse. It will not work out. I said it. And don't be disappointed. Ha! image of seriousness you are just lying to yourself why when would you decide that look this thing it had better work the other day, day i was telling daniel went to uh, ikeja to go and check that property we we're hoping to get no sit down there and i was telling him, daniel i hope you can trek and he was saying that uh, i said look at you daniel this period where you are going through tough times don't let it go in vain let it be an investment in your future that you know you will come back and testify in this lagos i remember my days on the streets i knew i will come back and say that god has helped this man yes, sir. what are you saying yes, sir. i'm currently treating my my healing by the grace of god i have prepared my testimony i have bought shoes i must wear i have settled the case with god and i'm practicing my faith don't play like good luck will land on your lap because you wish for it God will watch you like this. You will die and nothing will happen. So don't think you know this thing. If I were you, if I was seated here, I would be grateful all my life yes, for a pastor that can look me in the eye and tell me the truth. Yes, sir. That you are shouting doesn't mean God is hearing you. So let's go to this Romans 2. Uh, Romans 10. I bear them that they have a certain zeal and enthusiasm for God, but it is not enlightened and according to correct. So there, there's a way you can have zeal that is not enlightened and that is not according to correct and vital knowledge so it's not just knowledge vital let's read on it says look how it says for being ignorant of the righteousness that is god's strategy god's thinking god's plan god's purpose that's what that righteousness means there that god ascribes which makes one acceptable to him in word thought and deed and seeking to establish a righteousness a means of salvation of their own so they left what god has planned and went to go and create their own plan i said this one god should be okay with it i said i'm not okay with your it's not your plan i need it's not how you think you should do it i need follow what i said they said no he said a righteousness or means of, of their own they did not obey or submit themselves to god's righteousness see what god did you would have thought that god will help them see what your god that you are shouting oh god oh god did see whether you like that kind of god for christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. for christ is the end of the law that is the purpose of the lord go to next verse verse, next verse nine. for moses declared described the righteousness which is of the law that the man which doeth these things shall live by them okay next verse um uh -huh. okay so this way he started to bring up in chapter one he said god gave them to that their own righteousness so you think you know you are what you're doing he gave them up to their reprobate minds now you people are crazy huh? don't, don't worry take crazy and they died and god said no problem as far as god is concerned he's ready for the experiment it's for those that we believe what am i trying to do tonight i'm trying to speak to the fact that you need to get to a point in your life and say father i need help I did this years ago. I don't want to fool myself. Maybe this is why one made me 
you know, become maybe this, you know, radical or something. I, I don't like fooling myself. I don't like it. I told God, I said, Lord, I don't want to play with my life. I don't want to mess with my mind. Help me. I want to get it right. Your way. Your way. Your way. And the beginning of that for me was that he told me, calm down. I will give you a teacher. The first person he gave me as a teacher was Pastor Chris Okote. And I listened to him. And he started to unplug things in my brain. Maybe that's what's happening for someone here. I don't know. He started to unplug things. Many of us don't know him. You just wonder who is this guy, Chris Okote, Chris Okote. Well, <laughs> I, he was someone who you say was pastor, Taiwo Dukoya's pastor. I don't know if you understand that. He was Lake Kyoto's pastor. He was Ansley Madibuko's pastor. Do you see what I'm saying? So you see what he has produced in his church. He's not your mate. Eh? But he started to help me think the Bible by myself. And I stopped depending on just trying to make it kind of thinking. I started to seek for God's will. And that's what I want to talk about tonight. That God's will has a plan. Because that word will in itself speaks about God's mind. God's thoughts. God's strategy is not tied to luck. It's tied to his pattern, his ways. And they are very deep. They are not shallow. Romans 11.33 God's ways are deeper than ours. They are higher than ours. In Romans 11.33 All the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his, and his ways past finding out. God's ways are deeper than your imagination. It takes him to reveal it to you. For it to, to wait. It's not by luck it will come your way. No. Yes, are you listening? Yes, sir. Because some of us just believe that anyhow. I, I really fear for living around people that don't mean business with their life. I struggle with such environments. I struggle. I'm not serious. <laughs> so go back to that romance chapter 10 and so what i want to show you today is the ways of god are the strategies that win god's way is the winning strategy that's what i'm trying to say god's way is the winning strategy you know we said developing a winning strategy so in this discussion of winning what is a strategy a strategy is a plan of action is a plan of action towards accomplishing a goal a strategy is a plan of action actionable plans if you wish towards accomplishing a set goal are we together please can i hear your amen, amen. amen. we're going to watch a video now for 10 minutes and then we'll pray and we'll wrap up is that okay yes, are we ready for it so this discussion shows us that a strategy is not just a good wish. If, you, if your friend tells you, I'm going to win that basketball match, that's not a strategy. That you tell us tonight, I'm going to succeed, that's not a strategy. I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, that's not a strategy. We need to know what a strategy is. In this 10 minutes video, we'll watch it and I'll be back. Let's watch it and then we'll be back shortly. Can you give it volume also? Are we going to have volume? Actual start again, start again. Start. start again, please. Yeah. So let's enjoy it. I'll be back. Thank you. Since this is a strategy course, it seems only natural to start with a discussion of what strategy is and what it isn't. First, consider the following strategy statements drawn from actual documents and announcements from well-respected companies. Our strategy is to be a low-cost provider. We are pursuing a global strategy. The company's strategy is to integrate a set of regional acquisitions. Our strategy is to provide unrivaled customer service. Our strategic intent is to always be the first mover. Our strategy is to move from defense to industrial applications. 
What do these strategy statements all have in common? Well, first of all, none of them are actually strategies. They represent tactics, goals, objectives, and descriptions, but not strategies. They are mere strategic threads, small components of overall strategies. The problem is that in recent years, strategy has become something of a buzzword. Whenever we want to sound smart and demonstrate our business acumen, we just make sure the word strategy shows up in our ideas. The result is that we now refer to many mundane and uninteresting aspects of the business as being strategic, when they are really only small pieces of the overall business strategy. So then, what is a strategy? Being clear about what a strategy is will help us understand more clearly what a strategy is not. Well, the word strategy originally comes from the Greek word strategos, meaning the art of the general. In other words, the origin of strategy comes from the art of war, and specifically the role of the general in a war. In fact, there's a famous treatise entitled The Art of War that is said to have been authored by Sun Tzu, a legendary Chinese general, around the 2nd century BC. Strategists consider the art of war to be one of the great masterpieces on strategy. In the art of war, the goal is to win. Winning is good and losing is very, very bad. Can you imagine the great Hannibal saying something like, our strategy is to beat Rome? No, Hannibal's goal was to defeat Rome. His strategy was to bring hidden strengths against the weaknesses of his enemy at the point of attack to achieve that goal such as crossing the Alps when the enemies did not believe he could. The general is responsible for multiple units that must work together to win the battle and the war. The way the general adds value to the battle is by providing high-level orchestration and vision. That is, he can see what the field commanders cannot. Great generals think about the whole, and they work to coordinate all the necessary pieces even sacrificing some pieces when necessary in order to ensure that the overall goal is achieved. I notice that some people with casualties. We sometimes think of business as modern day war, but the casualties are more frequently investor pocketbooks rather than human lives. The challenge of the executive is similar to the challenge of the ancient general. The modern day executive needs to develop a set of complex tactics and activities that lead to a victory. So how do we know what our strategy is? Or, if we do not have a strategy, how do we formulate one? A good strategy provides clear and concise answers to four key questions. You know, the title is Developing First, a Winning Strategy. Where do we compete? This is where it is. In other words, what competitive arenas or markets will we be active in? We define markets as industries, product markets within those industries, and geographic markets. Second, what unique value do we bring to win in those markets? In other words, why do our customers choose our products and services when they could have chosen the products and services of any competitor out there? Mm. Our unique value could be cost or differentiation, which includes image, customization, styling, reliability, etc. Third, what resources and capabilities do we utilize to deliver that value? Do we have exceptional human capital, superior technology, unrivaled network connections, or a unique reputation? Resources generally refer to the things we have in our toolbox. These things can be tangible, such as a diamond mine or an oil field, or they can be intangible, such as a reputation. Capabilities generally refer to the things that we can do, or our ability to use the things in our toolbox. Fourth, how do we sustain our ability to provide that unique value? Are there barriers to imitation? Are there factors that keep our competitors from being willing or able to replicate the value we create for our customers? This last question focuses on understanding what factors allow us to continue to win over time. So one example of a clearly defined strategy comes from IKEA. IKEA sells relatively inexpensive, contemporary, Scandinavian-style furniture and home furnishings to primarily young, white-collar customers all over the world. By being the first furniture retailer to put stores in every major country, IKEA has greater scale than local competitors. The choice of markets has helped IKEA offer their unique value propositions of inexpensive, fashionable furniture. IKEA sells this furniture in a fun and low-pressure showroom where order fulfillment is usually immediate.
IKEA is able to sell inexpensive, stylish furniture because they've developed excellent design capabilities for inexpensive Scandinavian design. But perhaps even more important is the fact that products are designed to be manufactured by suppliers using mass production techniques and then shipped in flat boxes. The flat boxes require that final assembly is done by the final customer, but this dramatically drops shipping costs. Because shipping costs are so low, IKEA suppliers can manufacture furniture in high volumes and ship it around the globe. The complex interdependence of IKEA's strategy makes it difficult for competitors to imitate because they don't design their own furniture and their suppliers don't manufacture furniture in high volumes and ship them flat boxes. To imitate IKEA, they would have to completely change the way they design, manufacture, and ship their furniture. Note that we learn what IKEA does, but we also learn what IKEA does not do. IKEA does not compete in the high-end furniture business. IKEA does not try to provide high levels of service or customization to customers. IKEA designs most of its furniture, but does not try to manufacture its products. Thus, in addition to clearly articulating why we win with customers, a really good strategy also provides a clear boundary line signaling what we do not do. It is also important to note that what we've discussed briefly over the last few minutes is not in any way intended to be comprehensive. And there are many important perspectives that are excluded. For example, Henry Mintzberg, one of the most well-respected business strategists of our day, would want to emphasize the important differences between an intended strategy, an emergent strategy, and a realized strategy. He would want you to know that sometimes strategy is really more about what you actually do rather than what you intend to do. That is, your real strategy emerges as you do it and may not line up with your plans. Other strategists would not want me to leave out the importance of staging or timing. You may have a great plan, but if you execute the plan with poor timing, it may fall flat. Yeah. To be successful, you also need to have a well-orchestrated set of time steps in order to begin the marketplace. In conclusion, since we cannot adequately cover every expert's opinion in just a few minutes, I really want to focus your attention on the four questions we discussed before. As you strategically analyze companies and or develop your own strategies, you need to have compelling answers to these four questions. First, where do we compete? Second, what unique value do we bring to the table in those markets? Third, what resources and capabilities do we utilize to deliver that value? And fourth, how do we sustain our ability to provide that unique value? When you have these answers, you will be well on your way to articulating a clear strategy. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. right, right, right. Were you blessed? Yes, sir. Was that a good one? Yes, sir. Okay. Shut this down by now so that we don't get distracted. Thank you. Let's do scriptures. But were you blessed? Yes, sir. Was it something that, did you pick anything as in? Yes. So a brilliant natural person too will watch this. That's a natural man. Now you imagine the natural man watching this and you have not watched it. He has an edge over you. Hmm? Hmm? Knowledge. He has a knowledge, exactly. He has knowledge over you. So, prayer will not fl- fix that knowledge. Yeah. Prayer has made this knowledge come to you. Uh-huh. Prayer is not a strategy. It's a process towards getting what you want. It's included in part of your efforts towards your accomplishing your goals. I listen to what I'm saying. Yes, because somebody else knows this and he's not praying and he's getting the results. Because he's practicing it. Now imagine if you know this, you pray along and you practice. You now have super on your natural. So the Holy Ghost is not going to come suddenly. There's nothing God did just by himself. When he said that they wanted um, the Red um, red Sea to part, God had to tell them to do something. They did something. Then he parted. That part of man doing something is important and it's called responsibility. Mm. And what you don't know, because Moses could have been holding his rod for so long 
and not know it was supposed to just stretch it forth. But I want to ask you a question. If God did not tell Moses to stretch for that rod, if he had stretched that rod forth, you think he'd have parted? It was the instruction of the supernatural that made the stretching forth of the rod make sense. Yes, so that's why we combine our own natural efforts with supernatural instructions. Mm. I don't know if you are really listening. Yes, sir. If I go by your look, I'm asking questions. If you are getting what I'm saying. Now much more than getting what I'm saying, I'm really praying that you can apply what I've taught you tonight. Yes, sir. I've gone ahead to source this video just to articulate what I'm trying to communicate. Yes, that developing your own strength. I know some of us are not, you know, that's why I used to pray for the quality of minds that listen to me. Because mm. if your mind is not sound, you would think I'm just speaking big, big English. Yes, and, and your mind will just stay small. Mm. You know that there's such a thing called the employee's mind. The employee's mind doesn't think of other owning the business. So when he's working in that organization, he's never noticing what your guy is doing. All he's just doing is that he's learning how to follow instructions. Mm. That is good. Especially when you find fulfillment where you work. But please, know that there is more to your life than that. I don't know how to say it again. I've tried. I've tried tonight and I pray that what I've shared will bless your heart. Amen. Let us pray. Father, thank you for tonight. I ask for that your name is glorified. Amen. Breathe upon every heart here tonight, Lord. And let this learning, oh God, transform our lives for the better. Amen. Let millionaires come out of this discussion. Amen. Let those who will practice discussion become enlightened. Amen. Let their light, oh God, so shine. Amen. Let them rise from obscurity. Amen. Let them become significant. Amen. I pray, Holy Spirit of the living God, that you will make this discussion, oh God, change this church story. Amen. Now, Lord, you will advance this conversation beyond just what I thought and use it as a fulcrum on which you will build the next level of this ministry. Amen. Let those who have received me as your servant, Lord, tonight be distinguished in their testimonies. Amen. Take all the glory, eternal Father. Amen. I promise to always return the glory to you. Amen. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. You know, having heard this tonight, it's possible that you are thinking that we are talking only about business. You can apply anything that is spoken to concerning an institution into your family, and you can apply what is obtainable in your family into your personal life. Mm. So while this is true for businesses, like you said, you can cascade it down into your personal life. What is my personal strategy for life? Because it's the common element there is goals. You understand? It is the plan, the actionable plan to achieve desired goals. That's what we call a strategy, especially long-term plan. Long-term plan. Stretch forth your hands for this communion tonight. Please come forward. Let's have this communion. Oh, Father, I thank you.